I'm Simon Waterfall. I'm currently the creative director at Poke, along with my five other partners. And I've taken many different roads to get where I am today, which is, looking back on it, I don't think there was ever any rhyme nor reason to any of them. But I've always wanted to be a designer. I always knew at the age of 13 I wanted to be a designer. Didn't quite know what it was, but that's all I wanted to do. And I knew where I wanted to study, and I knew kind of the people I wanted to work with. So I studied pure product design at Brunel, which is in West London, England. And I did that for four years. Very much a technical course, so if you design a toaster, they want toast to pop out of it at the end. If you design a computer, you acid etched the board and solder a, an EEPROM onto it. I went on to then uh, study pure industrial design again at the Royal College of Art in uh, Kensington. Uh, under Professor Daniel Vile from Pentagram. And at the same time as starting that course, I started my, possibly the first company, um, digital company, which was Deep End, just in my dining room. Um, after finishing the Royal College, after two years, I then had to apply to join my own company as T-Boy, which was quite insulting. But uh, I was at Deep End went on for nine, ten years, um, became multiple officers, became multinational until it blew up and died in 2001 in a massive ball of flames. And the phoenix that rose, or multiple phoenixes that rose from that, has spawned many companies, um, one of which is Puck. I run a fashion label with my partner, uh, Matthew Gray, a.k.a. Tig, very bouncy, full of energy. Um, it's called Social Suicide, and that's been going almost five years. So we're a suit company. And again, it came from, maybe it's a, a theme in my life. People said you can't do it, or you shouldn't do it, or it's like men's fashion can be summarised by a lack of choice. It's like women go in and go, oh, I don't know, what shall I buy? We go, right, I've got three pairs of shoes, and only one of them fits me. It's like, we hate that. And we're not fashion designers, we're storytellers again. It's the same skill set, but just the transportation that carries that idea, that story, that prop, is a suit. And it's nice for me, again, from doing so much digital work, to be doing something physical with my hands again. So we've been, we show in Paris, Florence, and Vegas uh, twice a year. Um, this year, we've just opened our first pop-up shop which is just off Carnaby Street. And the whole, uh, the whole of this season is based on a really old-fashioned way of telling the weather, which is called the Beaufort scale. And it's how sailors would tell the weather. So the waves are capping, there's enough wind to make the sails full. It's a very, very old-fashioned way, and the English love the weather. That's all they talk about. They've got nothing else to talk about. So we based the whole of the spring-summer collection on ones to wear that it was sunny. So it's a beautiful yellow jacket that's cut four inches wide. So that you, you wear expensive t-shirts like the one you're wearing now, and then you put a jacket over the top of it. It's like, it has no pockets and no buttons and just hangs perfectly. Or whole jackets made out of mesh that they make the Herman Miller chairs out of. So from a distance it looks fine, you get up and it's transparent. It's like, what? So it's all based on these spring, summer, you know, wind, sun, rain. And we phoned up the Met Office and said, we've got this great idea for a shop. And typical mad English, instead of normally telling us to fuck off, they went, that's a brilliant idea. And every minute of every day, the Met Office sends us the temperature of London to our website. And above the till, there's a big plasma screen, and on it is this beautiful cloud shape. And in it, it tells you the temperature of London. And whatever the temperature of London is, that's the percentage discount we give. So last weekend, it was 26 degrees we gave 26% off. Midday, then it started going down and down. People in the shop going, it's just dropped another degree. And they're like, oh my God, I better buy it now. People are coming in going, how hot is it going to be on Tuesday? Can I reserve this? It's like, it doesn't actually work that way, does it? They phoned us up and said, uh, you do know we're uh, issuing a, a, a weather warning for the summer. We went, oh yeah. 
uh, it's going to be a heat wave. We're predicting 41 degrees for London. <laughs> we're, like, we're going to be broke. We're going to have to keep running it till winter then when it's minus five degrees. You owe me a fiver when you walk in. Thank you. <laughs> We have a healthy disregard for the way that things work, the way the fashion industry works, the way that it self-propagates and believes in itself. So we come in and just go, do you know what? We are different types of designers and we make suits. I had a pretty busy year last year. Um, amongst other things, I um, was asked to be president of the DNAD, um, which originally stood for Design and Art Direction. I say originally because it was always about designers and advertising. And three years prior to that, I was voted onto the board by the membership, which was very nice. And the way I was voted on was kind of pretty much part of my personality. They said, look, we'd like you to join because you're neither design or advertising. We want you to be our first ever other executive. I was like, other? So my written um, testament to the, the whole of the three, almost 4,000 members were, how fucking dare you? If you think digital design is other, then you don't get it. What it is, is a bridge between designing something beautifully and the signpost telling them where it is. And digital is purely, it cannot exist without both. I was furious broke that, got rid of it. A month later, they phoned me up and said, oh, good news. I was like, oh, brilliant. Um, we voted you in. I was like, did they not read the letter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. OK. So they know what they're going to get. Yeah, I think we're prepared for it. So I became the first um, digital person on the executive board. And three years later, they asked me to be the first ever digital president. It's not a jack of all trade, a master of none. What it is is a passion to, to tell stories, to be creative. Being specialised in how that goes out, the transportation of it, obviously it affects it. If you get a mass message, a man runs in now and hands me a piece of paper, he's got a uniform on, I'm going to read it. If I get a text message, it could be exactly the same message, I'm, it's on the table there, I'm going to ignore it. How you get messages these days colours the importance the order, how you react to them. And I think you can use that in your design. When you cross disciplines, when you have the same message, rather than doing a pure advert, let's do an experience, let's link that up. I think all of that contributes. The one thing that the web doesn't do, which comes back to my earlier point of being the first other president, it doesn't work well in isolation. That's because people nowadays don't watch and retrieve information in isolation. You know, people watch the TV, they've got the phone in their pocket, they're on their computers chatting with their mates. They do things in a multiple discipline way and they expect messages and branding and communications to join up. It would be considered lazy if you saw an advert that was out of sync and out of step with the, the website, which was out of state with Twitters about it. It's like, Nowadays, the consumer expects that at a very pure, functional, basic level. And I think being multidisciplined and having an idea, maybe you just have the language to communicate to somebody in fashion. One of my clients is Alexander McQueen. I can never hope to emulate the best fashion designer ever born on this spinning globe. But I now have a rough idea of the problems that he, say, he faces about showing in different places around the world about having a pre-collection, collection and post-collection. And, and all I'm doing is his website for him, but I understand how I can fit into that family of different disciplines. And that's very, very useful. Normally when we see students, especially students that come from the London area and the surrounding area, they've all been to the same exhibitions, they've all read the same magazines, they've all dated each other. It's like, normally you look for the things that show them to be a part. You look at the things at the very end of their CV, like, oh, you, you're really into outdoors. You're really in, into, I don't know, rock climbing. It's those, it's those extracurricular things that people really now concentrate on. In the very beginning of the internet, digital, you look for skills. 
now education is fantastic. It teaches skills. It teaches skills that cross over quickly into the industrial workplace. What normally isn't taught is collaboration. So, of course, students have to be, by the very nature of the number, very, very competitive with each other. I've never done a project on my own, just as a web doesn't do stuff on its own. And it's getting students to understand all the skills, how to have the language to speak to somebody in different disciplines and know how it can link together so they can work as a cohesive team in multidisciplines very quickly. And I think the difference between the old days being called a renaissance man, everything moved very, very singularly and slowly. You did something over there, something here, and something here. And normally, money was the reason why somebody could be a renaissance man, because you were a patron of the arts. This is a necessity, and it's the speed at which we all need to, com to communicate and to link up. Clients do not expect to pay for the education process for you to be able to have the skills to speak to their DR agency, their above-the-line agency, and in fact, actually, their factory. There's not that many pay people with the experiences in all of those sections, and that's why I, as a, as a, a multiple-faceted designer, I guess, I find it brilliant fun. It's a, an absolutely amazing playground in which to speak to these people and learn those skills, continually absorbing new languages. But at the core of it still is, I'm a storyteller. It was given to me by my father. He told a very good joke. It's about timings. I have an audience. I'm not a poet. It's not for me. It's about communication. Give me a new subject to work in, and I'll work in that. Plastic mouldings? I haven't done that yet. That'd be nice. Trying to get people to work together is it's an art, I guess. It's like having a good dinner party. Normally, the most interesting person at a dinner party is going to be the quietest person. Normally, the most interesting student is the one that couldn't actually stand up and say his own name. Being a good communicator doesn't necessarily make you a great designer, and vice versa. It's not, these skills are not you know, normally in the same package. So putting in a mixed team it's like whenever you start a company, you never want people to be the same. There's no point in having three people the same, because they'll be destructive, because I can do that. And when you, can do, when you see something that you can do, there's only two responses. It's either, oh, which is, that's better than I can do it, or, oh, which is, that's worse than I can do it. And when you see something by, in a completely new field by somebody else, you, something, something in you goes back to that childlike state of going, fuck me, that's brilliant. How did you make this sock puppet? How do you make fake blood from corn syrup and colour dye? How do you light that building to make it you? You're allowed to be generous of spirit. You're allowed to have that wonderment. And I think when you choose cross-disciplines, when you choose different groups, choosing the most diverse group so that they don't tread on each other's toes. They have enough flexibility and enough goodwill and spirit to work in a collaborative way. That's great. And it's, it's like any job. I think when you get all the extremes, it doesn't mean it might all meld into the middle. And it doesn't mean the loudest one, he who shouts the loudest or shouts last, wins. It just means that you're going to get, I don't know, you're going to get more bases covered. We're seeing a, a massive increase in offline creative skills becoming content for online. So a few years ago, you'd be able to look at websites, whether they were from brands or from individuals, and what you saw, how you went through the site, how you navigated, was the feeling, was the brand. Slow and turgid, fast and, fast and cool. That, that's the only experience, the only souvenir you could get. Now we've gone past that, where the navigation was the most important. We went through a phase of content is king. What you saw was really, really important. And now what we're seeing is community. And community is kinger. That's the word you can have. You can make t-shirts on that. Community is kinger. And what it was is, when you look at all the blogs and Flickr and YouTube, 
99% of it is found work, is collated work. I have found this. I have taken a photo of this. This is what I have discovered. Only 1% of it is created work. So the difference between collation and creation has never been more great. The currency of the web is the new. And when you have to find the new, there's no better way than to guarantee new and do the work your fucking self. So it's not the font you just bought that everyone's has. It's not the new package you've got. It's, I've baked a cake. I've made a sock puppet. I've done this. I've climbed this. I've got on my bike and done this. And if you look at the top ten pieces on YouTube right now, stop this tape, go and have a look. I bet you 90% of it is from creative people outside design studios. Because there's more creativity outside this building than inside this building. There are more people living in cities than in the country for the first time in our history. And all those people want to see new. Very small percentage, thank God, us, the creatives, make shit. Cool. Dun, 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 dun. Go, students! <laughs>